on Prime Crime. I went downstairs and his face was covered in blood. Do you know what they were hitting him with? A gun. The desperate search for a husband and father. I think so you know exactly really who did, did this, and I think you're scared. And the investigation that leads to an unthinkable conclusion. Chris Durant calls dispatch, and that turns out to be a, an important uh, moment right there. Hey there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Prime Crime. This is where we do a deeper dive into the most high-profile and memorable true crime cases. What starts out as a terrifying home invasion turns into something else entirely. Todd's County 911, what's your emergency? I have a home invasion. My niece is tied up. She's tied up. She is tied up and dead. It's February 20th, 2015 in Titus County, Texas. Ginger Kesterson is on the phone with police, explaining that someone broke into the home of her niece. I am untying her. I can't get to the door. What is the victim's name? Uh, Samantha Wolford. According to Wolford, she managed to break free from her restraints and call her mom, who then contacted Kesterson to come to the house. During the attack, her five children were all asleep. However, as for her husband, the father of three of those kids, Ernest Ernie Ibera Jr., he's nowhere in sight. He's saying that they hit her husband in the face about five times and drove him out. Police quickly arrive on the scene. So walk me through what happened. I don't honestly know what happened. Okay. I was in bed asleep okay. and we heard a noise. And the second I was able to open my eyes, somebody grabbed me and jerked me out of the bed and slammed me down on the ground and started tying me up. Didn't recognize anything about... They had black masks on, black shirts, black pants. Every inch of skin was covered. Home invasions are rare among average people because of the fact that there's so much risk involved, right? Because when you come into a home invasion, you're coming in with force, with weapons, you're holding people at gunpoint. The situation can easily spiral out of control. It was a very harrowing tale and very dramatic. Then when they dragged me downstairs, because they had him downstairs and they were separating us, I went downstairs and his face was covered in blood. Do you know what they were hitting him with? A gun. <laughs> At one point, Samantha says they bring her downstairs and have uh, her stand in front of him while they say, how can you not appreciate what you have here? You have this beautiful woman here. How can you not appreciate this? How could he treat her so badly? Uh, that they exposed her and they used her to taunt him while they continued to beat him. Why would someone attack this couple? And where exactly is Ernie? Let's take a step back. After meeting in a tattoo shop in 2008, Samantha and Ernie began dating. Samantha, already a mother of two, ends up having three more children with Ernie, and the pair wed in 2014. Yet things between the two weren't picture perfect. I don't think that uh, they had a very uh, good relationship. Uh, it looked to me like he was doing um, everything he could to keep uh, the family financially afloat. He was working two jobs. Uh, she was not working. So what was she doing? I've always wanted to be an actress. I think it is so much fun. One of the most amazing forms of art ever to be able to express yourself that way. Wolford spent her days posting numerous videos on her own YouTube channel. When you first saw the YouTube videos, you know, it was more like, you know, personable and she was trying to do how-to types of videos. Hey guys, I'm doing a makeup tutorial today. Um, it's my first one, so don't be too harsh. But as time went on, you saw her videos become much more darker, much more complaining about her relationship, really putting her personal life on front street. Hey YouTubers, today a lot of shit pissed me off, so you guys get to listen to it. His dad's not having a whole lot to do with this pregnancy, and that sucks. I'm kind of screwed as far as dating goes because I date losers. 
I think that Samantha had this perception that other people really cared about her life and she fed into that perception. I think this was a source of excitement for her and she wanted attention. The problem is, is that this really developed into this kind of tunnel vision for her. It was her only focus and her family was really left to the wayside. What do you think of me making YouTube videos? Well, I guess I don't mind. It takes up a lot of time. This desire for Samantha to become a YouTube star or some kind of influencer really started to impact the relationship between her and Ernie. And Ernie felt a little bit forgotten. Not gonna light a cigarette? Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Cause you got that fucking iPad in your hands. Oh, where, but where, where, but where? At least you're paying attention, but only because it's a fucking hilarious ass episode. Coming up, Samantha sits down with authorities and she realizes who may be behind this attack. I feel like there's something he hasn't been telling me, but I don't know what. What's your gut feeling to tell you? I think it's something to do with his dad. They would have to either be familiar with the place to be able to do all that and know where they were asleep. In February 2015, authorities in Titus County, Texas are confronted with a strange situation. A woman named Samantha Wolford explains that unknown masked intruders broke into her home, attacked her and her husband, Ernie Ibera, and then kidnapped him while her kids were asleep upstairs. It's what Wolford remembers, though, about the comments from the assailants that provides a new clue. Did you hear him say anything else besides yeah. what you told us? They said that it was because of his dad. And because of his dad? Yeah. Okay. And um, they said his dad knocked on someone and got their man thrown behind bars. And now they were taking revenge and taking someone from him. Could Ernie's father somehow be mixed up in all of this? As Wolford later tells detectives, she thinks he just might be. His dad has a problem with getting involved in things that he don't need to be getting involved with. Such as? Drugs. As law enforcement work to check out this lead, they notice that some things are off. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of blood though for somebody that was pistol whipped. It seems not really making sense of what she's telling me. No, everybody's wearing all black black shoes, no identifying marks on them. There's also the matter of a bound Wolford calling her mom. My mother was the first number on my call list. I just used my face. And so instead of calling 911 for help, you called your mother? How do you press 911 with your face? Well, how did you dial your mother with your face? I didn't dial my mother. I just pushed the first thing that was on there. It had just happened to be my mom. I think you know exactly who did this. I think the story's made up about, about the, uh, well, your daddy, his daddy, and, and, and stuff like that. And I, uh, think you know, I think you know exactly really who did, did this, and I think you're scared. Samantha sees herself as an actress, but I think that she exaggerates her own abilities, and investigators really see right through her. The only other thing... Okay, see, I knew. You know, you know, Sam, you know I'm not here lying to you. You know I know. The only other thing I know, and I don't even know, I know, okay. but it's suspicious. Okay. <laughs> I've been up at the hospital with my friend Charlotte. Okay. And she's got a guy there, and I swear to God, I cannot go up there that I said any of this. Okay. <laughs> because they have a lot of friends around here, and my life will be in a lot of danger. Okay. <laughs> I have a problem with talking to my friends about our problem. Mm -hmm. And he gets to talking about how a man shouldn't treat a woman that way and how you don't do those things to a person okay. and he's going to deal with the situation. Okay. I didn't take him seriously. Okay, you see, Sam, you know who did this. Okay, what, who is this got, guy? His name's John. John who? His Facebook is Rebel, John Rebel. As time went on, her story started to change because the reality is when you tell the truth, the truth doesn't change. And when the details start to switch up, that is definitely a cue for law enforcement that there's more happening here and that they need to dive deeper. What did you say when he said he's going to take care of that problem? I just laughed at him. I thought he was joking. So now all of a sudden, why are you bringing him out? Because you know that it was him. 
Because Why do you know it's him? I just have this feeling like it was. Up next, we find out who this John Rebel is and also what happened to Ernie. They never told me why. They just told me that they were going to fuck this dude up. But the evidence we're found on the scene, it's just not matching. I don't think you, I don't think you harmed this boy, but I think you know who did. It's February 2015, and young mother and YouTuber Samantha Wolford admits to Texas police she may know who's behind the abduction of her husband, Ernie Ibera. She explains that one day she had complained of her marital problems to her friend's boyfriend, who cryptically said he was going to deal with the situation, a statement that at the time, Wolford said she didn't take seriously. This man was identified as Jonathan Sanford. Now, Jonathan Sanford had recently been released from prison for molesting his cousin. Starting in junior high, he uh, enjoyed, you know, shaking kids down for lunch money. Uh, he's just that kind of guy, and he's really unapologetic about anything he did, um, illegal, wrong, immoral. Police quickly arrest Sanford as well as his brother-in-law, Jose Antonio Ponce. Jonathan Sanford and Jose Ponce were arrested the following morning and they were arrested because of information that Samantha finally disclosed to law enforcement. She had previously described that there were three of them, so I think law enforcement believed that there was at least one more person involved. Police also apprehend Octavius Lamar Rhymes, who Sanford enlisted for the attack on Ernie. Octavius Rhymes was from the nearby town of uh, Pittsburgh. He had been in the military. He was using drugs methamphetamine specifically. He wasn't doing anything uh, productive, and that's kind of what put him in this situation. Pretty quickly, after the Sheriff's Department detained and arrested uh, Jose Ponce and Jonathan Sanford, uh, those two individuals talked. Sanford decides to open up to police and explains how and why they attacked Ernie. Samantha talking about her relationship with me and Jay and my sister-in-law and all that and me trying to talk to her and help her out and all that because she seems like a good person to me. She was explaining to me how he treats the kids and all that. If I ever see it or if I happen to be around or if I ever see her with bruises or the kids with bruises that so yeah I said I'd whoop his ass. I did say I'd, I'd hospitalize him. I'm gonna put you down and make sure you can't come back up and whoop my ass as I'm walking away. It's almost like his attitude was, well, you caught me, so I'm just gonna lay it out there for you. Sanford recounts that after kidnapping Ibera, they took him to the woods and killed him. So Jonathan Sanford led the, the sheriff to where the body was. Sanford, Ponce, and Rhymes had taken Ernie to a remote location. They walked Ernie through the woods. He uh, was just in his boxers. He's been beaten to the point where he's, he's just moving. He, he's not really, uh, I don't think, coherent anymore. Jonathan Sanford had, had told us that his plan was initially to shoot Ernie, and then he decided not to, that he would slit his throat. And then before he had a chance to do that, Ponce shot him. Definitely did. Okay. What we need to do now. Oh yeah, he's dead. He's not gonna be alive. John Sanford said that uh, he was not, he wasn't expecting Ponce to do that. He uh, lifted up Ernie, saw that he was dead, and said something to the effect of game over, and then they left. Ernie Ibera is found dead, and the killers are apprehended. You might think the case is closed. Not quite. We're going to be, you know, checking your phone records for the last few months. Anybody that's involved in this and not connected to your phone? No. Okay. You're sure about that? Yeah. When we return. Hi, I'm Dan Abrams. In the exploding legal and true crime genre, law and crime is the only network that has it all. Good evening and welcome. This is a complicated case. Don't really jump to conclusions. Welcome to Prime Crime Tonight, another day of drama between both sides. From multiple live trials daily to original and compelling programming, the Law and Crime Network is everywhere, and we invite you 
inside the jury box. This is Law & Crime. Think all court shows are the same? We're talking about your father. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Think again. Judge Caprio rules with common sense. I was having contractions. I was rushing to the hospital. Inspector Quinn, what does justice demand? Jail? <laughs> and compassion. I'm going to take the circumstances into consideration. The best court experience I've had. Clearly, Judge, he's been in a court before. Get caught in Providence. In 2015, Texas investigators make a chilling discovery in the woods, the dead body of Ernie Ibera, a young man who was kidnapped after a reported home invasion. Police arrest three suspects, Jonathan Sanford, Octavius Rimes, and Jose Ponce. Sanford would eventually confess and direct police to the corpse. Ibera's wife, Samantha Wolford, an aspiring YouTube star and mother of five, says despite her marital issues with Ibera, she was not involved. She does admit, though, that she had complained about Ibera to Sanford, who by all accounts got angry with how Ibera treated her and their kids. Yet, is that the whole story? Not even close. We've got a pretty volatile past, and we've arrested him before. Yeah. Assaulting her and the infant. Make sure you know, she didn't do something to him and then stage the scene to make it look like something happened. Authorities note that the scene of the home invasion is suspicious, with no items taken, the kids being asleep the entire time, and the fact that immediately after undoing her binds, Samantha called her mom first, not 911. I think that Samantha wanted extra eyes. I think she wanted people to be able to corroborate her story. Up to that moment, it, it could have happened like she said. The officers arriving on the scene did not have any thorough understanding of how fragile the ribbons that she was tied up with were. And they didn't have the information regarding how she got her phone and how she was making phone calls. Where did he take that? Well, we've got a search warrant for your phone. That phone's gonna be ours for a while. Things are just not piecing together with your story. It's the phone data that would reveal so much. Let's go back to the body cam footage from the night of the home invasion. They took his phone. To... So he's got his phone? No, they have his phone. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, all right, this is what we need to do. I need to do an emergency uh, phone ping, and I've got the cell phone number. Chris Durant calls uh, dispatch, and when he's doing that, she does ask if she can call or text her mother. Can I call my mom back? Yeah. Verizon gave us text messages from Octavius Rhymes' phone. That showed some back and forth between Samantha's phone and Octavius's phone. We had messages from her to the co-defendants to try to help them evade law enforcement. So the first one was at 2.30 a.m. Comparing uh, the time stamp on Durant's body-worn camera and her asking if she can call her mom or message her mom. At that moment, she sent Octavius Rhyme a text that said to the general effect, kill Day's phone, shut that down. Um, Day is a nickname that uh, Ernie Ibera went by. Are they getting anything off his phone? They're, they're trying to right now, so. But so far, nothing. Uh, they haven't heard back yet. Then there was a second message. She hears through the radio something about an address in Pittsburgh. Miles from a resident in Pittsburgh. You know anybody in Pittsburgh? Really? Contact uh, Pittsburgh. As he turns around, she's picking up her phone. At that moment, she sent another text to Octavius Rhymes that said, Ditch phone, move. And the phone records then showed a 30 second call between her and Octavius Rhymes just immediately after that. Text messages very clearly showed that she was the mastermind, that she was planning this. This wasn't an accident. She was an equal partner in all of this, not the innocent victim that she claimed to be. She may have been frustrated with her life. You know, obviously, 24-year-old mother, five children, money is a con was a constant struggle. You know, her husband was working several part-time jobs. 
I've had a lot of people stop me and ask about how I deal with things. Honestly, it's hard. Samantha had this warped way of thinking, this warped mental state, that this was going to be the way that she got out of her relationship with Ernie. The thing is, if her plan was successful and she didn't get caught, then certainly she would be the YouTube star that she's always wanted to be. This would get her a lot of attention and she could play victim. And I think that's what she wanted. Sanford and Ponce pleaded guilty to abducting and murdering Ernie Ibera, and each were sentenced to 50 years in prison. Rhymes went to trial in two different counties, but was convicted in both cases, ultimately receiving a combined prison sentence of 98 years. As for Wolford, she also had two trials. We tried the kidnapping first. What she was trying to do is distance herself from the uh, text messages. The position she took, the testimony that she gave, was that uh, she had been prescribed Ambien for sleep problems and that she had taken an Ambien and she really didn't remember anything that happened um, and didn't remember sending any text messages. The jury uh, just didn't believe it and uh, they convicted uh, her of the aggravated kidnapping and sentenced her to um, 50 years. A few months later we tried her on the murder case in Camp County uh, and that jury gave her 99 years. When the jury sees, uh, you know, the still shots from the body cam with, the same, with her on her phone at the very same time that the phone records show her sending text messages to the people who, you know, who killed her husband, that's some solid evidence that, that a jury uh, appreciates. While Wolford appealed her cases, her attempts were unsuccessful, and it seems she'll spend the rest of her life behind bars. I can shit somebody quick if they mess with me. Otherwise, I'm really nice. I love people. I like get along with people so well, and they love me, but don't cross me because then I can be really, really mean. It's bad. You know, sometimes you just can't make this stuff up even as much as you want to. For Samantha Wolford, she was looking for all the fame and attention in the world, and she definitely got her moment in the spotlight, just not how she imagined or wanted. That's all we have for you here on Prime Crime. Leave us your comments on Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag Prime Crime. As always, thank you for joining us. And until next time, be safe.